This is Brand USA Talks Travel, elevating the conversation about international travel to the United States. Here's your host, Mark Lapidus. What's your first memory of working on a movie set? I was lucky enough to grow up on locations all over the world. I was a cheap extra in a lot of these movies. One memory stands out. We were in Palau for the film The Living Sea. I was about 11 at the time, and we had the big IMAX camera, and then our crew was down there, and I got to dive with them. And I was face-to-face with this enormous grouper, and I'd never seen a grouper before, but this grouper was three times as big as me and did not worry at all about being close. And he got up to about three feet in front of me and I could see his eye and he could see my eye. And I was like, I'm hooked. This is incredible. I always thought if I could do what my dad did and I could do it in a way that worked for my business side, it'd be incredible. And lucky enough, that's what I got to do. Glad it wasn't a shark. (laughs) Glad it wasn't either. (laughs) My guest today is Sean McGilvery, president of McGilvery Freeman Films. Sean has been instrumental in the creation of Brand USA's three big screen films, National Park's Adventure, America's Musical Journey, and Into America's Wild. And his company is one of the most successful producers of big screen movies in the world. Welcome, Sean. How many big screen IMAX films has McGilvery Freeman Films produced? We've done just over 40 IMAX giant screen films. And just a little background on the company. My dad started it making surfing films back in the late 60s, early 70s. And those did well enough. We was like, hey, I could do this for a living. He then went to Hollywood, worked with Stanley Kubrick, did the opening of Shining. The car goes up to the crazy hotel. And then got tapped by the Smithsonian to make their first IMAX film called Two Fly. And that was back in 76 when there's just four IMAX theaters. You know, now there's over a thousand. We've done 40 of these IMAX documentaries. And they play in all the museums and science centers across the country and around the world. And I've been lucky enough to be a cheap extra in a lot of these and grew up doing it. And it's been a wild ride. And I pinch myself that I get to do this for a living. To Fly was actually the first IMAX film I ever saw. It was in the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C., and I think it's still playing there. That's quite a long shelf life. What is the typical lifespan of a big screen film? You know, what we try and do is make them so that they're both timely and timeless. And when it comes to the film, like you said, Two Fly, that's been playing at the Smithsonian since 1976 every day. So pretty incredible. But, you know, the majority of the films, they'll play many times for the first two to three years. And then we'll continue to get licenses from various places around the world. You know, our film National Parks Adventure, which was the first film that we did with Brand USA, that's still playing in cities all around the world. Sean, we talk a lot on this podcast about the difference between creating content and creating advertising. We're finding that a lot of DMOs could better understand the differentiation between the two. What are your thoughts on the subject? The beauty of it is that you can create stories that are emotional, are relevant, are inspiring, are educational, but do in a way so that it doesn't feel commercial at all. And that is harder to do with other products and with what we call content marketing from other companies. And so I think there is an amazing opportunity for cities and states and countries to create stories that feel very natural and feel very compelling and inspiring without feeling overly commercial. And they can actually, I believe, do a much better job of attracting people to visit these places because of that. And so that's what we've grown up doing. Our legacy as a company is is built on top of that. That that is how our films are funded, is typically through companies, through foundations, through individuals that are excited about showcasing some type of topic to the world in an interesting way. I've heard you use the expression story first on several occasions, and it sounds to me like it ties directly to your comment. Yeah, it's all about the story. That typically starts with amazing characters and incredible locations. Being able to interweave that in a way that feels very natural and authentic. If you can find that right sauce, it really feels like it's an expedition or an adventure. And it feels like there's a beginning, middle and end. Then you got something going. That word you just used, authentic, is key to creating actual content as opposed to advertising. Absolutely. I think audiences can sniff the BS pretty quickly. And so it's better to start authentic rather than try and just manipulate it in some way. Uh, That would be a good recommendation. After content creation comes distribution. Could you describe the necessity of a good distribution plan? I think it's incredibly important. You know, we think about it from the very beginning. There is so much content that is out there 
you really got to be thinking about it strategically from the very beginning. And for us, you know, when it comes to the IMAX films, you know, that's where we have these amazing partnerships with museums and science centers across the world. Because we have those relationships, we know that they're excited about playing the films for six months to a year and sometimes years. And then after that, it's working with the streaming partners and the broadcasters so that it plays in people's homes. And then we like it so that it gets into schools, as, as many schools as we can. And so it's multiple platforms. And a lot of times what we do is we'll work with additional sponsors and partners that not only help fund the films, but we leverage their marketing and we leverage their in-kind advertising that they'll do as part of the project. And so being able to have the films play on a United, for example, or having it so that they go to a certain email list, that's all important. I've had the pleasure of working with you on several TV series. In fact, we're just now beginning to work on the second season of Trails and Trailblazers. What have you learned about distribution on various platforms? Leaving aside Go USA TV for a second, let's talk about a few of them starting with Netflix. We've had a variety of our films play on Netflix. The beauty of Netflix is that it has maybe above 200 million households now. It's pretty close to that. And so the potential eyes on it is very relevant. One of the challenges with Netflix is that they won't actually give you the viewership data of how many people see it. It's really just becomes an estimate. That can be a challenge. We've also had our films play on Roku and Hulu and you know traditional broadcasters like the Discovery Channel and National Geographic. It's exciting too because there are so many more platforms that are out there now. Like Curiosity Stream, for example, was founded by the founder of Discovery. And all of these platforms are looking for content. So if you can create great, compelling content that doesn't die after a certain period of time because it is so timeless that they can play it for a long period of time, that's a big part of it. We both learned the hard way that exclusivity is a double-edged sword. That is always a trade-off. As you get down to the business side between, you know, are you looking for eyeballs? Or are you looking for revenue back? That is the beauty of at least the content that we've produced where, you know, many times you can have a return on it. You know, if a film comes out, people actually pay to see it when it comes to ticket sales or there is some type of license. And this is always something that from a producer standpoint, you know, working with partners, there can be trade-offs between, oh, do we want to maximize revenue? Revenue or do we want to maximize eyeballs? And there might be times where you want to maximize one versus the other and, and the opposite. In the little time we have remaining, could you describe the One World Ocean campaign that your company is involved with? Yeah, absolutely. No, so One World, One Ocean. So this is our kind of CSR initiative, maybe. But it's something very passionate to my parents, to myself as well, just the idea of inspiring people to care about our oceans and just the impact that our oceans have and how important they are to protect. And, you know, we've done three IMAX films around that topic, and we've continued to create content around that from social media to working with aquariums to just getting people excited about the wonders of not only the oceans, but just our planet. And that's what gets me excited about about every day is, is telling those types of stories and getting people excited about exploring this amazing planet that we have, even in our own backyard, in cities and states across the country. Well, continue the good work. And I so appreciate you taking the time today, Sean. You know, I could talk about this all day long. So I'm hoping that this will be the first of many podcasts to come. Love it. No, thank you, Mark. Appreciate it. Since we've spent this episode discussing video and film content creation, I feel obligated to remind you that our TV channel, Go USA TV, is always looking for shows from DMOs. Check out the channel and then send us your best. Thanks for listening to Brand USA Talks Travel. I'm Mark Lapidus. Your feedback is welcome. Email us at podcast at thebrandusa.com or call 202-793-6256. Brand USA Talks Travel is produced by Asher Mirovich, who also composes music and sound. Engineering by Brian Watkins. Please share this podcast with your friends in the travel industry. You may also enjoy many of our archived episodes, which you can find on your favorite podcast platform. Safe travels.